<sighs> Time to put one billion screws back in. This is a Dell Latitude E6540 that we're going to take all the way apart and put a new motherboard into. This might take a little while, so stick around and enjoy. You might want to get a drink for this. Here, let's move you in a little bit. So, as it often is with these things, we uh, need to just take all the screws out of the bottom. There, there's screws gone. Uh, that screw's gone too. Why are the keyboard screws missing? Huh. Okay. And these are supposed to be hard drive screws here. Really? No, they're not. Those, those can't be. Oh, come on. Really? Yeah, so there's a dirty solid state drive in there. Oh, boy. You can uh, take the DVD drive out. There's no hole here for it, and you just pull. Comes right out. That's pretty easy, right? Yeah, I, I thought it was pretty easy, too. All right, let's, uh... Don't have a lot of room on my desk. Latches, and the battery comes out. Now, you notice that this looks like it's supposed to be a removable plate, and that's because it is. A removable plate. You literally just lift it up. But here's where it starts getting fun. See these professional computers they're designed to be serviceable but they're not nearly as easy to actually replace the board in. So you need to get these heat sinks done here. Come on buddy get... Oh, that's stuck. Get up. Well, that's, that's a bit of a hazard of the job now, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to move your microphone, and maybe you can hear me better now. I don't know. Maybe you can't. All these screws holding all these heat sinks. My screwdriver seems to be lacking a little bit in magnetism. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and magnetize this. This is a hard drive magnet ripped out of a laptop hard drive, an old laptop hard drive. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Eh, not quite. All right, well, I tried. So now there's a little connector here to get the fan out fan power there all right Just lift it up slide it out that is gross that's gonna have to be redone all right yummy heat sink grease very very yummy okay here I need to punch in a little bit more here look at this yeah see that beauty right there this is your wireless card. Only one screw because I guess they couldn't afford to. Yeah, get him out. You can just pull that out, pull these wires, and set the card aside. And you're going to have a lot of fun with this. Uh huh. So, this CMOS battery needs to just be pried up, just, just lift it up and the sticky stuff will let go eventually and that's that okay you've got a connector here uh, let's go ahead and pull you out so you can see a little better you've got a connector here that needs to come up lift up mm, missed Alright, it has to come up this way. It has to be done opposite day, the opposite way. There we go. Alright, that's up. Let's lift it out of that slot. The video connector is actually held down, so we need to remove this bracket. Sorry about the rig going by. 
get this bracket out of the way and then when, there's a pull tab right here see that pull tab here let me uh, give you a little bit more rotation in favor of this and you grab this tab here and oh that's tight it doesn't want to come up okay yeah you're supposed to pull up but that's kind of stuck so you know what with being 10 years old and all so I'll get in here give it a gentle no you're not gonna come up come on now get up get up this video connector see there's a pull tab here but if I try to pull on that, it's uh, just being grouchy. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it it broke the tab though, but it's up. Whatever. All right, right here. This looks like it's probably the DC jack coming in here. So let's get that up too. Get a fingernail and a thing. That's also really tight. Need something for it to pivot against there. There we go. Jacks up. All right. Now, before we uh, get too deep into this, let's flip it over. Uh, it's sitting on that CMOS battery. All right. Let's open it. Open the computer and see what we can see here. So, this keyboard. There should just be this frame around it that you can pry open. Yeah. Just get it up and gently wiggle around and the clip should release. In theory, there we go. Try to be gentle with it if you can. Come on now. Let it go, let it go. Yeah, it's pretty tight in the corner. Yeah, you'll need to put a pry tool in down here in the corners to get the corners up here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. We'll set that aside. The keyboard has one, two, three, four screws down here at the bottom. Let's get ripping. The keyboard screws are small. I'm actually fairly confident that this goes to something else. So let's go ahead and get the screws out of the obvious keyboard here and take care of that. Little fun note down here in the corner is your Wi Fi switch. I don't know if you can see that. Let me let me actually turn the brightness down just a just a hair. Uh, how did ISO get set to auto? Oh that's unfortunate. Huh. Well, um, we'll just roll with it. Yeah, I, I can't seem to get it to set to anything else either. This is lovely. I'm so happy now. Can't change the stinking ISO. I love it. All right. So there's your keyboard. There is a single wire here that goes to that keyboard. Full auto. I accidentally set the camera to full auto. How lovely. Let's get the... That screw is super tight. There's all these screws under this keyboard. Okay. 
one. They've all got markings that say M2.5 by 5. So it's fairly easy to see where they go both when you take it apart and when you put it back together. I do wonder if this is in some kind of a frame here. Let's see if these buttons come loose. It looks like they do. Yeah, those buttons come loose. Though I think they're still attached. Hang on. <clears throat> yeah, the buttons come loose, though I don't know that you need to take them loose uh, from there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put these buttons back and put this one screw back that doesn't go through to the bottom case and leave it there and if we need to take it out later we will lots and lots of screws Pop this connector. This goes most likely to the power button. Go ahead and get it popped. There's one here too. Probably the touchpad. Let's get it out. There are... Oh, there's a little screw hiding right here by the wireless switch. Right down here. You can actually can't see it, can you? Oh, that's too bad. All the way down here. All the way in the basement. Okay, it looks like all these screws are gone. I do see a screw coming up from underneath. So let's go ahead and start looking at that. We got all the top screws out, but the bottom screws remain. <clears throat> so start taking these bottom screws out, and there are a lot of bottom screws. Great, and they're shorter than the top screws right there, so... Yeah, these look like they're like 2 by 3 instead of 2 and a half by 5. But, you know, we'll just roll with it. Let's go ahead and get this. Hopefully they're all the same size, but God knows whether they really are. Come on, that one's not the same size. The one's uh, under the hard drive screw, yeah, that's not the same size. So these black trim screws are skinny. These larger case screws are not. There are quite a few screws. And they pretty much all have to come out to get this case apart. I love these computers for their normal maintenance. I absolutely hate them for their motherboards. And that's pretty good, actually. If that's the only problem, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. There are a bunch of trim screws here. Come on, get out of there. Uh, the ones under the CD drive are... No, that's not under the CD drive, is it? Yes, it is. The one down here is even skinnier. So, you can imagine it just keeps happening. Um, those are very small. It's going to be interesting putting this back together. Normally, I would lay them out in a pattern of some sort, but I don't have a lot of room on this desk. And more importantly, um, there are enough screws at this point that it would be very difficult to lay them out in a pattern that you could actually remember um, and, you know, still have the room. You'd, you'd almost need a template to do this, and I'm not going to that level of trouble. So what's our goal here? The goal 
is to get this done without having to get all these wires pulled from their channels because they are awful to put back. Yeah, there's two screws here too. It just doesn't stop, man. It just doesn't stop. All right. If we do a quick check, it kind of looks like all the screws are gone. I see a motherboard screw here. The big question I have is, oh, look at this. There's an SD card thing. Get the SD card card out of there. Um, every screw should be gone from this anyway. The big question. How does this come apart? Well, look at that. Piece of trim. And down here on this side, a piece of trim under the CD drive. And over here, there's a piece of trim as well. And it just kind of lifts up, revealing more screws. Aren't you happy? Now, these should actually be hinges. Let's see what happens if we try to get the case to come apart. If we just start prying at it, what happens? I'm going to go ahead and start prying at it. Yeah, so this is separating a bit. But I can feel something holding it. That's probably that motherboard screw right there. Let's go ahead and get it out. All right. Yep. Look at that. You can see it falling away. That something else is holding it though. Or at least it feels like it. That doesn't mean that it actually is. Let's see what happens here. Did I miss a screw? I could have. It's always possible. I do not think that I did. Looks like those buttons do not have to come out. But let's see. Get up. Get up. Come on now. You need to get up. It feels like it's stuck, so let's make sure down here are there any screws that I have missed down here. I do not think so. I don't see anything there. So why is it stuck? Ah, just had to push harder on the other side. And that is one nice thing about this setup. You can reach the other side and push relatively hard. Nice, okay. Let's keep popping things. Is it held in with another tight thing? No, that feels like it's probably an actual screw, not just a theoretical screw. But let's make sure. Are there any screws back here that I have missed? Yes. Yes, this screw that was revealed under the trim piece is holding it. There is a screw here, but that may be a hinge screw. I'm not sure, but I'll go ahead and remove it because it has a P. And let's see if that was the key to liberating the top half of this lap. Yes, it was, because look at this bad boy. Came right out. And there is your top plastic there. Okay. What's left? Well, we need to get this motherboard out. So now that the top plastic is gone, we can look at this and figure out how to attack it. So, what do we have? We have... Uh, it's a little back heavy. That's unfortunate. So, first of all, here's another wire. This looks like a speaker wire here. Goes to the front speakers. Get this speaker wire unhooked here. Yeah, no, we'll just have to do it this way. Speaker wire unhooked here. Come on. Come on. Get up. These connectors haven't been taken out since assembly, and this computer is a bit old, so it takes a little while. There's another flat 
cable here, flip it and pop it. And there is a board over here. Looks like it goes to the VGA port. And it may possibly have something holding it in, but let's let's hope not. I don't want to take that back trim off if I can help it. But it is going to the motherboard. So let's go ahead, get these screws down here, this little daughter board here with the VGA connector. Let's get the screws out of that. Come on. Come on, buddy. Yes, there it goes. One VGA connector daughter board. Out of the way. We need to take the screw out of the corner here. It's hard to see on the camera, but uh, it's way down there. And it's very, very tight. There's one here. They all have little arrows pointing at them to show you where they are. How kind of them. see there's one down here near the speaker right down here in case you can't see it well on the camera it's right here there is one here by that speaker connector you unhooked it's also near the other speaker so that's pretty easy to figure out okay Okay, what? All right. I got distracted by something, sorry. So this is one of those mildly frustrating motherboards that kind of spans an entire laptop case. You kind of have to flex these to get them out. So it looks like, let's see. First of all, what else could possibly be jamming it up? Let's see if we can get these USB ports. Grab this plastic and pull away. Did you see them release? Yeah, that's all it takes. That is, that little bit of flexing is all that it takes. Now, it does feel like it's still stuck in the corner and not by any ports, but by something on the bottom. So let's not pull too hard. Let's inspect it and see why. I actually see another screw right here. Uh, those are hinge screws though. That shouldn't be causing it. And actually those are loose. I'm tightening those hinge screws. Uh, there's a DC jack here but that is unhooked. So what's holding the board in this corner? That's a good question. I'll come back to that in just a minute. We need to get this motherboard out and we were trying to figure out what it is in this corner over here that is holding it in place. It doesn't look as if that screw should be doing it. So what's doing it? Because surely there's something, right? Well, the phone's dingle sound seems to agree. So we got this. This is just pop this and it comes right out. But it feels stuck over there. What's it stuck on? Yeah, that definitely is pivoting as if something is holding it and has escaped me. So what is it? It's like a loose tooth. So I actually do not know why this is stuck at this point. There's not any other screws apparent that could be holding it. Unless... 
somehow that screw is in there, but I doubt it. So we are at a bit of an impasse here. There are no more screws holding this board in. There are no screws, but it is still being held. So what's doing this? I can see that there's a little plastic pin there. But what's actually holding it? It feels like it's stuck at the bottom. Alright, yeah, see this is the problem. Sometimes this kind of thing happens when you're doing a disassembly and you just get stuck. Now, is there a screw that I can't see underneath these wires? No, there is not a screw that I can't see. It's all clear, man. Why is it not coming out? Mm. It is stuck. It is stuck, and I don't know on what. So that's kind of a nuisance. So I have this board that won't come up. It's stuck on something, but there's no screw holding it. So what's doing it? This is definitely one of the most frustrating things I've ever had to deal with. It very clearly has nothing holding it in. Yet yeah, something's holding it in. I'm going to start taking screws out that shouldn't be holding it and see if they make any difference at all. They probably will not. Actually, there's no way that screw's holding it. I'm not, I'm not taking that out. Come on now. Or do you have to release that hinge to get the board up? You might. Okay, new plan. New plan. So, on the back of the computer here, all right, there's a hinge screw here. We may have to lift the hinge to get it up. So, let's go ahead and take that out. There's one in the back of the machine as well that same hinge. Alright, let's see now if we can lift the hinge up and get it out. That makes some space. Does it give me the clearance I need to get it out? It did. It was stuck there. Okay. CMOS battery is stuck. Let's get it up through here. All right, so you do have to release that hinge to get the end sockets there done. Okay, all right, all right. So we got it out. Now, now for the fun. We need this ram, so let's get the ram out. We need this CPU. Use a flat or Torx screw driver. I'm just using my pry tool to get the CPU out. And I'll set it aside. And that is probably the end for this board. And now the only other thing is that I notice this board looks a little different. Okay, there is a difference here. This board has a slightly different setup. The GPU is not present, so yeah. This board doesn't have a discrete GPU like the other one. That's wonderful, unfortunate, but whatever. At this point, frankly, I know they don't even use the thing for anything but internet. Anyway, no skin off my back, buddy. Gently get this CPU in. Is it falling in all the way? It is. And we'll screw her down. Uh, look at that. I have to have a Torx. Oh no. Do I have a Torx? 
I don't know if I have a Torx. We'll find out if I have a Torx. Oh uh, yeah, what are you? A T8. Torx T8. All right. That should be the only Torx that I have to worry about. One Torx T8. Now we're going to need to do the heat sink grease, but we'll do that at the end. But for right now, let's go ahead and put the RAM back in to the new board. Oh, clean that off. There's something on it. Yuck. Alright, go ahead and put the RAM in. There we go. And come on. There you go. RAM. Flip it over. Now, it's also upside down. Lovely. So, we're going to need to jam it in that corner first, but let's hold this wire while we do it to keep the wire from getting sucked up. Actually, where's the CMOS battery? That needs to come through too, so we'll make it dangle. There we go. So, hold this wire up put this in. You may or may not have to lift this hinge again to get it to go all the way in. But to get it in there, the speaker wire might be in the way too. Yeah, you need to get pivot in there, buddy. Pivot in there. Come on. Come on. Yeah, this speaker thing right here is a bit of a problem, it looks like. All right, so the headphone jack is a problem. The headphone jack is a big problem. So let's uh, let's see if we can get that headphone jack to pivot in place. It's getting stuck. Okay. So let's lift this up. Let's get some separation between here. Jam that in there. That'll pry it back just enough. Yep headphones in that peg is in this wire is up this wire is up okay 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 we can drop this again okay and all of that stuff should generally fall in place the CMOS battery is jamming though so let's get that through let's go ahead and pull that CMOS battery through as best as we can if we can come on now don't do that I was so focused on that, the CMOS battery is being a problem. Get the board to come up. And you can't see it, I know, but you just have to get that battery to come through that vertical slot that the old CMOS battery was through. Alternatively, I wonder if maybe you could just take the CMOS battery loose. But uh, we're already in, so I don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, let's get a screw in it so it doesn't go anywhere. <sighs> let's get these screws back in. Pull a screw back in all the time. Yeah, for some reason it's uh, a little bright over there. There are four screws holding the board in. We'll go ahead and get those in place and make sure nothing's in the way. That would have been bad. All of these screws are very tight for some reason. It's it's mildly frustrating. Let's go ahead and get these cables put back before well, before I forget and then the customer complains later about something not working. Uh, if you get bored, go watch my video, Even Professionals Make Mistakes, where I show you that I forgot to plug up the power button and then wondered why the computer didn't turn on. 
because I'm smart. I am, my brain is big and smart. VGA daughter board. Much harder to put back than it was to take out, of course. Let's go ahead and get that back. So I don't have to think about that anymore either. Now I need to put the two screws back in that hinge that I had to release, so I'll get to that as soon as this is done here. I mean, in the end, it's actually a pretty well-made machine. I can see why it would stand up to some serious abuse over time. It actually looks like this machine is bent. So I guess it's seen that actual abuse. Okay. Let's see. They're going to have to wait just a minute. I don't think that's the screw that went in the back. That looks more like the kind that goes in the back. Okay. Put the hinge screws back, so those are done. Now, now for the hellscape that is all this stuff. What fun this is going to be. And by fun, I of course mean not fun. Let's see, we can put that P-screw back right there. No, we can't. I haven't put that panel back yet. We can wait on that. We'll do that later. Let's plug all these wires up so I don't have to think about them anymore. That board is flexible. I think I'm going to go ahead and get the other end put back. Yeah. don't have to worry too much about snapping it all back. It'll kind of snap itself back after a while. Put enough screws in it, and it kind of does that work for you. Kind of. 2.5 by 5. Go, go, go. These screws really do hold very tightly. I don't understand why they set it up this way, but... But they did. Whatever. It does make it rather painful to put back together. I just realized these screws here. Oh yeah, they're the same. They're all the same. Doesn't matter. There's a bunch of these of this same two and a half by five. So I'll just pick whatever I want because I don't care. I just want it working. There we go. Okay, that's these. Let's get these extra cables hooked back up. Flip the connector, push the blue thing on the wire in, straight on. If it's at an angle, it won't go in. Who would have guessed? This one here, flip it up. 
though the end on this one's brown instead of white. I'm really not sure how that color coding works. This one doesn't like going in. Okay. <clears throat> we still have to hook up the keyboard. While we have this up here, let's go ahead and do that. Get this keyboard plugged in. Flip it up. Push it in. Straight on. Same as before. Come on. Get in there. I didn't say it was easy to get it in there straight on. I just said that's what you have to do. What do you think, I am an expert or something? Ha. Huh. Okay. Put the tabs in and then push it down to clip it. And then these little flat screws that hold the keyboard down, well, they need to go back in. Oh, look. Right down here about the keyboard, Remember that wireless switch screw? Yeah, I forgot that. It's so covert in the way that it sits. This is a 2x3 and I think I just tried to put something bigger in it. That is not correct and won't work. That is... Yeah, there's four keyboard screws and they look like they're smaller than the other screws, so... Let's use the right ones. Look at that. If you use the right screws, it tends to work. Who would have guessed? I appear to have commingled some screws. That is unfortunate is that it? that's it for these alright this basically clips back in to wiggle or push a little bit to get it to go, but it will go back eventually. This one doesn't want to. It really doesn't want to go back. Eh, we'll worry about it later. It's not a huge deal if it doesn't doesn't affect operation. It just annoys me. And it's not even my computer. So why should it annoy me? Oh, I didn't put that crossbar back underneath there that blocks the video connector, but that's okay because it's not necessary. The video connector will hold itself. I do not have to do it. Time to put one billion screws back in. I'm trying to use the longest ones first because I know that they go here. Any of these ones that say P generally are going to be quite long. 
generally the one cannot you know, always be certain I do wonder what P stands for there's really no I mean plastic but it's all kind of plastic so why why were you doing this to me okay we've got one more long one here where do you go where are you hiding reveal your secrets where do you go where do you go hmm so this is why you always end up with extras I'm not sure where this long screw goes so for now it may just stay out but we'll see so let's look at these trim pieces one more time they just clip right back make sure we got all the screws underneath these trim pieces these nice and tight I'm pretty sure I already tightened these but I'll check them one more time yep okay that's good enough let's go ahead and get that back let's put the DVD drive area trim back here this is a little too bright and let's see how do you go you go there and let's go ahead and get these one billion trim piece screws put back because you know we need it to look pretty it looks bent to me but I'm sure that's just styling it's it's style you see it's all style It also just occurred to me that extra long screw probably goes to the keyboard. Let's go ahead and plug this DC jack back up while we're looking at it. Or not? Come on now. Get in there. There you go. Uh, and let's go ahead and put the video thing back. Since it is reachable. Let's see, did it go vertically like this or not? I'm pretty sure, actually, that it went like this and then it would come down there, basically, and that holds it down. And then this goes here to keep it there. Now this wire goes into a little channel over here. Make sure you put it back in that channel so the screw doesn't go through it. Right here. There's a clip. Get it under there. There we go. So now that wire won't get cut. CMOS batteries here. Put a few more trim screws in. Hold on. There are quite a few of these. Still waiting to go back. It looks like I'm actually missing one. I must have used an extra somewhere that I wasn't supposed to. So I'll just skip a screw hole. It'll be okay. At least that's what I'll keep telling myself. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Alright, now we get to the ugly parts. So, all the wires are hooked up. Most of the screws are back where they go. 
But we have a different problem now. Yeah, the hard drive screws go here, so I'm not worrying about those. Now we need to get this clean. There's no discrete GPU in this one, so I'm not super worried about that part. But there is a gigantic chunky CPU. And we need to get this cleaned. Come on now. Get clean. Get clean. Get clean, baby. Get clean. Alright. Clean all the old heat sink grease off that looks like it's made of gum. And I'm hoping this CPU didn't get damaged. But it is possible that it overheating killed it. We never know. If that's the case, I may have a replacement on hand. I may not. A little heat sink goop. My heat sink goop brings the text to the yard, and I'm like, you're trespassing on private property. Alright. Got a little excess over here. Just for fun. I, I put it there for fun. Okay. So the one for the discrete GPU is actually probably going to land right on top of that other Southridge chip. Let's just clean it. That chip should not require any kind of cooling to speak of. Let's see if it makes contact. Because it should actually, it does make contact. Let's go ahead and give it a treatment too. Just because it's going to make contact with that heat sink. And it doesn't hurt to have the cooling. That's gross. Might as well blow it out while we're in there. Tighten our heat sink down. Now obviously there will be leftover screws because we don't have a discrete GPU to heat sink over here. It's just sort of resting on top of that Southbridge chip instead. So the three screws for the heat sink uh, assembly for the discrete GPU that isn't available anymore. Yeah, sorry for smacking the mic. That's just gone. Real quick, let's do our Wi-Fi card. Nice Wi-Fi card back in the day. Oh. 
go ahead and put it back in place and get the antenna hooked up this is always loads of fun by fun I mean it's not fun at all Okay, uh, that's basically it as far as the internals go. Now, the fun part. Put all this junk back. Mm. All in line. There you go. CD drive. Just shove it. Hard drive. Shove it, and there are two long screws. Let's put this SD card thing back while we're at it. Uh, they obviously never used the SD card slot. We'll just keep the guard in there to plug the hole. And we are left with one longer screw, which used to go here, but I'm not sure if I want to do that. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll just go with it. Let me see if I have another similar screw to put in. I have a pile behind me. Maybe I can fit one in. This looks similar. Maybe we can get them a keyboard screw back. That would be good. Yep. Battery drops in and then the back clicks down. It's weird. Oh, it doesn't want to click down. Hold on. <clears throat> Is it a replacement battery? No, I don't think I got it in the thing all the way. That's what happened. I didn't put it in all the way. Although it does actually look like, it, yeah, it's a replacement battery, so it's probably molded ever so slightly off. There we go, okay. All right, in the grand finale, does the battery have a charge? It does, how unfortunate. Does the processor work? Yes, it does. How fortunate for the customer. Well, we'll review some CMOS setup stuff. Like, uh, don't care about the battery, but, you know, boot and all that. I don't know that this is a computer that I set up. So... Anyway, that's, this is a bit outside of the scope of this video, so... Um, that's it. Motherboard replacement. Here's our old dead one. The new one seems to work. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Do all that YouTube stuff, you know, like and subscribe and blah blah blah. Oh, give me money. Go to my website and give me money. Links at the bottom. Take care.